What's up guys, the Strong Boys 19 here. This is going to be the list on the top 15 favorite albums of 2020. I was really surprised that I have listened to a lot of albums and I'm here to say that I'm going to be sharing with you guys these albums that are my 15 favorites. Now originally I did a top 10 favorite albums but I wasn't really happy with my comments. But what I do is I'm going to be adding other albums to extend the list. So this is my top 15 favorite albums of 2020. And number 15 is the latest Boris album, No. This legendary Japanese Doom Drone Stoner experimental metal band are back with a vengeance on this new album and I know they've done another album with the highly uncompromising avant-garde noise artist of Mersbo but I think No is more onto the favorite for me the production on the album is very very good it's completely raw sounding especially onto the drums and the distorting frantic vocals and the great distortion guitar tones with these doomy riffs and the cross-punk styles that are mashed together on this album. It's one of the better albums in Boris's discography, as that I have loved some of the previous albums from the 2000s. That is personally one of my favorite eras, if not my favorite era from Boris in general. So No is a really, really good album and deserves to be into the list. Number 14 is Testament Titans of Creation. The Mighty Testament are back with another album featuring Gene Hoagland once again on the drums. And he's really on fire with this album as much as the rest of the band here on this album. And Chuck Billy's vocals are really on point with his brilliant tone. The musicianship is as fantastic as the music. There's a lot of these songs catchy and memorable on a lot of the material. On towards the later half, it can be a little bloaty, but most of the tracks here are super good with these amazing riffs to guitar solos and the structures themselves, that they are still at it, full of thrilling excitement all around. And this is why Titans of Creation deserves to be here, because they are still an excellent band and if you haven't come across this album yet if you are into one of the other underrated bands then Testament's new album could be the one for you and this record can't really get a hold of this still being a very good really solid album and number 13 in the list is Sepultura with Quadra now I was not really a fan of the Derek Green lineup after the classic Cavalera period from Sepultura, but I was immediately surprised when I was listening to this. The songwriting on the album, there's a lot of the instrumentation that is still as menacing and powerful with these engaging sounds of these thrash aesthetic sounding riffs and the brilliant drumming can be still as tribal inspired one of the better albums for me in the Derek Green period in Sepultura's discography as a whole I really like Dante 21 a lot which is for now still my favorite with Derek Green from this band's era but I find Quadra to really be at one of the top favorites in this lineup and the change of these styles that Sepultura still provides us to hear their music into this experience. And number 12 is Ailstorm with Curse of the Crystal Coconut. I really do admire Ailstorm still, and they were not really always afraid to personally go into another direction while continuing their heavily inspiring pirate metal themes, as they've been heavily consistent on that mark for years since the beginning. There is a noticeable difference that some of the songwriting is simplistic and not like the previous albums. But 
it still is renowned for the signature sound. Music, still as fun and as exciting as before. Really good production. There isn't really much I could say on an Ailstorm album, but since that, I've been a fan for a very, very long time. This has to be here since I think their discography has always been this, this very, very good and full of these engaging rides just to have a great time with. Number 11 is Bob Dylan, Rough and Rowdy Ways. Dylan's first originals album in eight years. And I think this is one of his return to form paths. For me, still being my favorite lyricist and solo artist of all time, his discography from the previous albums are mostly Frank Sinatra style covers albums. But I think Dylan is back, especially throwing in these clever references, a bit of humorous ones, to some deeper aging sounds onto the deeper sides of life with the production that is very, very warm. There are essences for me that makes me reflect on something from a Blood on the Tracks era or on a Blonde on Blonde era. Dylan's voice on this album was very nice and it is comforting to hear Dylan since Tempest from 2012 and it deserves the amount of the acclaim in my honest opinion. Not much I could say on this one either as I have done quite a long review for this album but Rough and Rowdy Ways is for me one of Dylan's best albums in his career. Okay now we're into the top 10 guys. So at number 10 is Omega Diatribe's Metanoia. If you are into the aggressive, low-tuned sounds of the heaviness of gent genre, then check this band out. They deserve a lot on the recognition. There are moments on the production that I think is better than the previous records in their discography. Vocals-wise, I really dug the new vocalist and the melodies on the cleans from one of the members definitely suits and combine things perfectly. So I was very impressed into Metanoia in the songwriting abilities. They are continuing their own paths. Some of the riffs can be groovy as the previous records. So if you are into this kind of sound, you need to give this album and personally Omega Diatribe's discography a shot and you will not be disappointed if you are into that kind of tone. And number nine is from one of my favorite bands of all time, Mr. Bungle, The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny. In terms of the discography, this album would be in the least favorite, but it's still a very fun album. This is their most thrashy album. It's their complete re-recording of their first demo from the mid-80s of the same title. I just can't get a hold of the musicianship on here. Mike Patton's vocals are amazing. Same with the guitar riffs from Trey Spruance to Scott Ian from Anthrax. And even onto the bass work, Dave Lombardo's drumming is fantastic. There's a lot of the tracks where it's all a huge ride of a record. But I loved a lot of the stuff onto this record. The passion and the dedication to replicate the demo was strong on this record. So if you want to check this band out into a completely less experimental side and more onto the obvious sounding touches of metal, then give this release a go. And it's such a great release in their discography entirely. And number eight is Dakesis with Fractures. So impressed by the sound and the effort. The band had been making this album for ages. If you are into the symphonic sounds of metal, then give this band a shot. The musicianship was fantastic, and especially onto the vocals soaring right through the roof to the guitar riffs that are immense. And the drumming, this was entirely self-made and self-produced. So, Give this band the love and the support, and I have been totally giving this album a lot of enjoyment for myself because it grabs me 
as that I was grabbed into the sound of everything on this record. This is a local Birmingham based metal band, so if you are into some local bands in the metal scene, listen to the Kesis and support the band highly. And Fractures is such a stunning piece of art. And number seven on the list is The Ocean, Phanerozoic 2, the follow up to the Phanerozoic 1 concept album from 2018. This is a tremendous release. It's a wonderful feeling. I was involved into this. The songwriting got stronger and deeper in presentation and the vocals, one of the best parts, including these gorgeous harmonies and the tracks themselves deliver as menacing. It's as brilliant as the previous first Phanerozoic album. I was so pleased that Pelagial from this band was one of my high favourite albums from 2013 and I'm happy to have this band here once again in a favourites album of the year list. What could possibly go wrong in the discography from one of Germany's best bands, legendary progressive titans themselves and Phanerozoic 2, really one of the best and favourable albums for me as the instrumentals grow with me and the landscape and the searchings of these interesting lyrics about the Phanerozoic concept. I was just thrilled with this whole thing. So that's here in the list, Phanerozoic 2 by The Ocean. Very, very strong album indeed. And number six, now this is for me the most surprising album of 2020. And I was really aware with the overall reception and the high attention of this band. But once I got into this album with repeated listens, I couldn't believe that I was obsessed with this. Code Orange Underneath. The production released via Roadrunner Records, easily one of the best from this entire year. The band took two years to make this and it is so much worth of the dedication. It is so open in the influences from hardcore to metalcore and a lot of the industrial metal packages that are spliced together. This is such a wild, addicting wall of such frantic cacophonies of instrumentation that I just could not stop listening to. It was this phenomenally well made and highly dedicating to Hair Code Orange at one of the triumphant releases and underneath is really one of those albums that was completely effortless, blew me away from the later future lessons, and it does get better with multiple repeats underneath. What a freaking fantastic release from this band. And number five is Fury, the Grand Prize. I am happy, like the Kesis, to have Fury in a favourite albums of the year list because, like the Kesis, they are a local metal band with influences of mainly the British heavy metal scene from Iron Maiden to Black Sabbath and even from the likes of Metallica, etc. This is really their best album in a long time. Their discography is flawless. The vocals being one of Julian's very best in ages to the guitar work, the riffs, the soloing, as outstanding to the bass work, sublime, as well with these drums. The passion is all here from the start to the finish. This contains one of my very favorite new Fury tracks, and it's just one big, exciting, thrilling piece of these heavy metal arts that we know and love and Fury deserves as much of the praise and the attention like the Kesis as well as the other bands here in the list but if you are into heavy metal listen to the grand prize 
no introduction needed for me at this point. And the grand prize is just a great album all on here. One package of stunning results. No questions asked here. And number four is the latest Fintroll album. I'm not going to butcher this album title because I'm not really good with pronunciations from other languages. But I think this album is Fintroll's best album in years. It's catchy, if not even better than the previous album seven years ago of Blotzvept, which I would have rated that album far too high because I think this album is a huge comeback, outstandingly well crafted. The production to the songs themselves, just excellent all around here. This is just as strong as some of the previous albums, like one of their classic releases of Jack Tins Tid and even Nat Fod, which are Fintroll's finest works, but this deserves for me to be one of my highest favorite records in Fintroll's discography, one of my favorite folk metal bands of all time, with tinges of some bit of black metal from the riffs to the explosive drums with blast beats to the vocals and everything else combined in between into these songs never really gets tiring for me and this is why it is onto the list to me. Number three, now this is going to be something on a different personal approach. Number three is Nine Inch Nails Ghost 5 Together. Now the reason why this is high on the third spot, I was coming back into reflecting into the current state from what 2020 had become, but to at the same time feel a different vibe of expressions and feelings. And when I listened to this album, it made me feel comforting. It feels as suitable because the first half of this album is heavily meditative, but it can be pretty emotional sounding because of how bittersweet yet stunningly beautiful it sounded. The second half of this album is pretty futuristic with these synthetic, robotic sounds of these synths. Trent Reznor really puts this out very appropriately, even releasing Ghost 6 Locus, which was a dark ambient, very good album as well, but this album for me is the favourite. This album puts me in a different environment, different place, and it's just, for me, one of those that transcends me into a different path that I really wanted to be involved into this state of music. I love ambient music, and Ghost 5 Together is one of these albums that I think is maybe one of the most underrated albums, more onto the praise in my opinion, and I heavily respect Trent Reznor as well as Atticus Ross for putting these two albums separately to be putting out these pieces of music into the beginning of the pandemic and this was at a perfect timing because Ghost 5 together, even on Ghost 6, are two amazing albums in their own right but Ghost 5, for me, deserves to be into the list. And number two for my second favourite album of the year, Napalm Death, Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism. I thoroughly, heavily loved a lot of the stuff to the album. The riffs, the vocal department featuring one of Barney's very best vocals, the drumming, the instrumentation still grabs and sounds as powerful, expressive, yet hugely dark with various influences that some would say that it's different to what Apex Predator Easy Meat was, but I think some of these influences on this album are perfect. Something that reminds me on like a Swans album or something, you know, in a doomier and gloomy sound of aspect. Throws of Joy in the Jaws of Defeatism is to me one of Napalm's 
best albums in years. Such a monstrous release. And it is, for me, one of the strongest albums in their discography. At number one, my favourite album of 2020. For those who have seen my review on this album, you know which one is coming. I've done this review with Jamie Horsley, who you should subscribe to, by the way. My favourite album of 2020. It is Deftones' Ohms. Ohms, for me, is one of these near-perfect albums that this record takes me back into my path from the past of discovering metal in various genres and ways, and one of the bands makes me think of that heavily was Deftones. The production by Terry Date, easily one of his best in a long, long time. There's a lot of the soundscapes into these gloomy yet beautifully sonic and awesome melodies that were nailed on point on here, especially onto the synthesizers that are really eerie and as ambient with cinematic sounds and soundscapes to these guitar riffs low tuned with some groove and a lot of edge. The drums as rhythmic still grabs the punch. Even on Chino's vocals, completely fresh and as brilliant. I have always loved a lot of the tracks onto this record, onto the separate identities of them by themselves. Some of them are adventurous and some very melodic, especially onto the way Chino sings. Even on adding in some of the distortion makes things completely... Uh, versatility driven. Some moments remind me on previous albums like on Around the Fur or some of the experimental ways on this album definitely fits in as easily one of the phenomenal standing points in the career from one of my favorite bands in the metal scene and Ohms from Deftones is for me my number one favorite album of 2020 and not only that that this was to me the most played album when this album was released i had not stopped playing this i've played this album more than five to close to ten times that's just a showcase of something as good if not as incredible of an album like ohms that in my opinion is really worth the number one pick and the winner for this list. So yeah, that's all I have to say on that. Ohms by Deftones is my number one favorite album of 2020. So that is it guys, that is my list of my 15 favorite albums of 2020. Let me know what you guys think of the list in the comments below. And I want to say thank you so much for enjoying the reviews that I had done throughout most of the year. Well, almost an entire year at this point. And I will be back to do some new album reviews for each year as much as I possibly can. But it depends for me in my future outside of YouTube. But I will continue my passion for music and review more albums. I can't thank you guys enough for the amazing support. You guys are just one of the best things why this channel is still here. If not for me, the best thing. You keep this channel up and running as much as myself. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll keep you guys posted for more videos in the near future.